Who drinks coffee in the room? You can put your hands up. So like about one eighth of the room. It's not many people, but it's pretty normal because in Vietnam we don't drink much coffee. However, we produce a lot of coffee. We are the second producer of coffee in the world after Brazil. And when I say we, it's not me who produce coffee. Eh? It's not you neither. It's the farmers in Daklak, Lamblom, Zalai, also a bit in Sonla. And those farmers, every day they wake up, even earlier than me, they wake up at 5.30 and they take care of the coffee trees. And every year they harvest the fruits. And thanks to them, every morning, for the one eighth of you, there is coffee in your coffee cup to drink. And then you can start your day on a happy feet, right? So in the recent years, coffee farmers have faced a new challenge, and it's climate change. So climate change is a change in weather. So um, temperature is increasing all around the world. Weather patterns are changing. For example, there are more storms, more frost. And the rain is changing as well. In months where it was raining, it's not raining anymore. And in months where it was not raining, now it's raining. And this is very bad for coffee trees. It affects the, the way it grows and it affects the production of coffee. So we have some solutions for this. One of the big solutions is uh, changing coffee tree itself, creating new varieties of coffee. And scientists have, working, have worked on that in the last 30 years. So they've been to Ethiopia, the place where coffee were first discovered, and they selected new wild varieties of coffee. They checked how they grew, they checked the, the amount of fruit they produced, they checked other characteristics like the length of the roots, leaves, branches, and they selected the, the ones that were looking like they were good for drought resistance, the ones that would resist climate change. And they took them out of the field and they bred them with commercial varieties, which we know already produce a lot of fruits and a, a good, pretty good quality coffee. And then they created new varieties. So they bred them together and they created new plants, like 1,000 plants. Then they look at those plants and they chose the best one. And after selecting and selecting, they got maybe 20 plants. And that's the plants we have today to test on the field in Vietnam. So in 2018, we planted those new plants, like only four of them. So the other one were planted in other countries. So only four of those varieties were planted in Vietnam. And we've looked at how they, they grow on the field. We've looked at the, the height, so how, how quick they are to grow high, and how much like centimeters or meters they are. We looked at the, at the weeds, we looked at the, how many branches they have. And for the first time this year, after two years of growing the coffee, we looked at the production. So we looked at how many fruits they have and how heavy it is, because what's important is how heavy it is. And we, we are going to process those fruits and look at the quality of those beans. And hopefully we, we can know, we can see if those new varieties we are bringing in Vietnam are better for the yield and also of higher quality and then we can hopefully spread them to the farmers in the next years. This is the first step to creating new varieties, testing them and knowing which one is good. And then what we need to know also is why they are good. And this is more tricky because we need to look at how the tree behave. Like a tree doesn't move much, right? But if you look closely, you can know how much water it lost. When, when is it active during the day? Does it, does it wake up early in the morning, like coffee farmers? Uh, the, do the coffee trees wake up late, like more like people in Hanoi or in, in the cities? So some varieties will wake up early, some varieties will wake up late. Some varieties will take a nap around 12 or 1 p.m. Some coffee varieties will stay very active during this time. And when they're active, they also lose a lot of water, so it's very bad when there is a drought. Then we will know why they are better. So yeah, when they are active and why, why they are better for the yield and the production. And once we know why they are better in the way they behave, we also look at why they are better in the, their genes. So this is a bit closer, like smaller. We look at the, at the genes, at the molecules, and we see which genes are expressed when there is a drought. And can we link those groups of genes that are expressed with those characteristics we observed before, like those times of activity, the length of the roots, the, the length of the, the leaves. And then 
once we know which genes are involved in those characteristics, we can try to then create new varieties from those varieties, and again and again. And this is like a cycle. We do it like all the time, and then we, we try to always create new varieties to keep up with climate change and always have the, the right varieties to grow on the field. But this process takes a lot of time. So in the varieties I'm growing uh, here in Vietnam, the one we planted in 2018, it took like 30 years to create them, to go in Ethiopia, find the wild variety, doing the breeding and everything. 30 years, it's older than me. So the people who created them are like the, the age of my parents. And, and it's not good for farmers because uh, climate change is quick and farmers need a quick, fix, a quick fix. And one of those quick fix that are way faster is like growing coffee in higher altitude. So instead of changing the coffee itself, we change the environment of the coffee. We grow coffee in higher altitudes because every time you go 100 meters higher, you also gain like, you lose, you lose one degree Celsius. And so it's fresher in high altitudes. So coffee is happier there. We can also irrigate the coffee field. So watering the plants, literally. This sounds easy, but um, watering a, a big field is pretty expensive and many farmers don't have the money to invest in the watering system. And for the farmers who have the money to invest, like uh, in the central highlands, where they're a bit wealthier than in the north, uh, those farmers don't really know how to, um, how to irrigate. They, they usually put too much water. So this stresses the coffee plants and it produces less if it has too much water. But it also like, uh, overuse uh, water reserves in the underground. So we know that very soon there won't be enough water in the underground reserves, and then at some point farmers won't have water anymore to water the coffee trees, and this will be a big problem. So um, irrigating needs to be done, but it needs to be managed, and we need to train farmers to know what they are doing. And a last solution, my favorite one, is uh, agroforestry. It's when we grow coffee trees with shade trees. So we, we plant the coffee trees and we plant before like taller trees which are making shade. Often, very often they're also producing coffee as they're producing fruits, fruit trees and um, timber. So farmers can sell the fruits and they can sell the timber and make more money. And those shade trees are also helping the coffee to, to grow better because it, it protects it from um, the bad weather and from the frost, for example. And it also like makes the microclimate, the environment around the coffee tree more fresh. So the, um, the fruits take more time to ripe and they have higher quality. So we need to be careful when we plant shade trees to choose the right species and get the, the ones that are not competing for water with the coffee trees. And also shade trees need to be cut sometimes so um, there is not too much shade because if there is too much shade then the yield of the coffee tree decreases. So also, we need projects to help farmers to know how to plant shade trees and how to manage them. Because shade trees are also very good for the environment. They give a house for biodiversity, birds, insects, and they also store the carbon from the atmosphere. So the CO2 that we release, that creating climate change, shade trees can actually pump it up and create wood and store it in the wood. And this decreases the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and hopefully decrease the temperature, yeah. So we got those like four solutions, right? Like creating new varieties, irrigating, planting in higher altitudes, like planting shade trees. But there's one solution we haven't talked about and this last one solution, it's, it's you. It's like the one eighth of the people in the room who are drinking coffee in the morning or during the day. And for people who drink coffee, it's very important to know what kind of coffee they are drinking. Like, as they're drinking like coffee which was produced in a, in bad conditions, or which were which used like a lot of fertilizers or pesticides, or do they drink coffee that was more sustainable and try to be more organic, more healthy, more good for biodiversity? And if you are aware of what coffee you drink, then you can really change uh, how coffee is produced and you can send a message to the coffee industry and tell them that you like the coffee that is sustainably produced, coffee that is organic, healthy, good for the environment. And then the, the industry will listen to you because they usually listen to the markets. They, 
they want to sell coffee. So if, if there is a demand for a coffee that is better produced, more sustainable, they will also like create this kind of coffee to, to follow the demand. And once you, you start changing the way you, you buy coffee and buy a coffee that is like better for the environment, like then at a, on a long term, we can try to solve climate change together. Thank you.